from the same brutality. So uh, come up here and just speaking from the heart. You know, uh, I did a demonstration of putting a white man in the same shoes as George. And I just wanted to see the the, the, the difference, you know, so, uh, people outside looking in so they can see it from a different view. You know, instead of seeing a black body down there, let's see if the white brother was down there and have three, the three black men on top of him. Would it look, would, would it look differently? How would they uh, take it then? You know, this is Central Neighborhood uh, in Minnesota. Uh, Central Neighborhood was the first uh, area where African Americans can own homes and, uh, and start their own business. So that's why this has been a sacred spot, uh, space differently from anywhere else in, uh, in Minneapolis right now. A lot of places are catching on fire and things like that, and this community has stuck together because this is a lot of black owned around here. Uh, this is the black culture. Prince grew up in this neighborhood. Yep. 38th in Chicago is the heart of the South Side, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, what's your re reaction when you first saw that video being that that's your neighborhood? Man, it was just like, I, I just knew I had the, the it, was, it was about to get crazy. I knew it was, it was about to get real epic, and I was just, I was just, I knew I had to lead. I knew they was going to look at me for some leadership. I know uh, my, my neighbors and my community was looking for some leadership to lead us through this transition of time. Uh, we was already dealing with COVID-19, with businesses not opening, and uh, families missing uh, incomes in their house. Then this hit, so it's, it's been a lot of shake in, uh, around uh, Minneapolis. So we've been trying to keep the positivity, keep the love going, uh, keep the uni uh, 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 unity spreading out. And man, I've been trying to lead the way. So I think this time around, they have no no question about it. If it was intentionally, if it was overdone, you know, he always he was already passed out, and in the, in the, in the officer still was still sitting on his neck for another two minutes after that. So it's it's no there's no there's nothing about this that is gray at all. So I think I think it's a clear picture now. I mean I'm not surprised because that's 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 the world we live in. You know um, the African American if it happened to African American he'll get he'll get charged like that real fast. Um, it'll be a quick turnaround. But since this is the world we're living in, that this is the, this is what we have to face. Uh, people prolonging things, uh, not taking it seriously, um, uh, taking this as a joke. I, it was a lot of different emotions. I, you know, I want to state that. You know, I, I'm not all for like messing up where you grew up at, but when you realize it's white owned, and a lot of this stuff we don't own in the first place, and a lot of stuff we're not welcome to, and we're we are, and, and 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 all these businesses from the banks to the grocery stores and the uh, convenience stores won't be nothing without the the black dollar. You know, so the more they disown us, the more we're trying to take power. Like, hold on, forget these highways. Forget these things that we help. We're we're uh, we're hardworking Americans, and we're still getting shortchanged. Um, we're systemized to, to to fight each other. We're systemized to uh, not embrace each other, but go against each other. You know, all we can do is uh, show leadership during those times when I when I experienced that. You know, and what in my actions behind that? Did I revert to uh, revenge? Did I revert to negativity? Did I revert to uh, going down a different path? You know, uh, no. I chose to be a leader, and I chose to do positive things behind it by doing stop the violence basketball clinics and uh, don't shoot guns, shoot hoops, uh, uh, charity games, and still embracing giving away turkeys on Thanksgiving and things like that. So just embracing that experience by setting up a platform where I could tell my story to a young black man that needs to hear it. Man, I hope to see change. I hope to see uh, you know change in the uh, constitution. I feel like we got it. It just need to be a clean state. I mean, we need we need to start from we need to reset the system. We need to start from the uh, grassroots, and that's the constitution because it's against us. And I think uh, Central Neighborhood will be fine. I think this will be a, uh, this is uh, this will never be forgotten. And I think uh, George left his imprint on, on the city for sure. I had a crackhead daddy. I had a dad that was in jail, in and out of jail. 
the streets raised me. My brothers that I grew up with, the, the so-called gang members, those are just brothers to me. We didn't grow up no gang members. We didn't grow up this and this and that. We grew up as family. And I think that's what we got to get back to. Is all you thugging, all you gangsters, step up to them cops. Stand up for your neighbors. Stand up for your community. Y'all need to start looking at these so-called thugs as protection. Because guess what? Who's been feeling the threat these last five days on the dangerous street they say is illness outside in, in Minneapolis? If y'all didn't know the history of this corner, you would never be able to do nothing like this. Ever. 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 If it wasn't for the protection of the so-called thugs, I'll call every day. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.